In 2010, one 23.5 ounce camel can turned the entire world loco. Human beings have been combining caffeine and booze for centuries. Italians would spike espresso with grappa and call it cafe corretto. In Spain, they'd use whiskey or brandy and call it carajillo. Things changed in the 1970s when a Thai businessman concocted an herbal, energy-boosting tincture. He called it Red Bull. This is the first energy drink. 1997, Red Bull comes to America. Caffeine isn't just about coffee anymore. Millions of people are totally psyched. 1999, members of the Kappa Sigma fraternity at The Ohio State University begin mixing energy drinks and booze during frat house parties, as do sorority houses, many, many, many bars, and assorted guidos all over the world. How you doing? Y2K-ish, Jeff Wright, Jason Freeman, and Christopher Hunter, three bros at The Ohio State University and members of Kappa Sig, graduate college. Congrats, guys. Good job. 2001, Fast and Furious is released. I'm sure those dudes watched it. 2003, those three frat bros we were talking about noticed the growing popularity of energy drinks. They thought they could do it better. In 2005, the boys found fusion projects with a pH like fish dedicated to creating caffeinated booze. They described themselves as, quote, their own target market, which, yeah, seems about right. Later, after a period of probably very fun R&D, they developed Four, a caffeinated alcoholic drink with 6% ABV, named after its four main ingredients, caffeine, taurine, guarana, and Wormwood. Yes, Wormwood is that thing in absinthe, you're totally right. 2006, 4 is a giant flop, but Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift is not. 2008, after some more failed iteration, Fusion makes an all-or-nothing gamble with a new drink. They called it 4 Loco. According to experts, 4 Loco is effectively 46 beers, a shot of espresso, and one Red Bull in one can. 2010, it's the year of the loco. Fusion blows wide open, tripling their revenue, bringing an estimated 150 million, almost as much as Tokyo Drift. Four loco becomes a pop culture phenomenon. It also gets the unofficial tagline, hyper horny and happy from the Ball State Daily News. However, Senator Chuck Schumer had different sentiments, claiming it's, quote, designed to appear hip with flashy colors and funky designs that could appeal to younger customers. This brings us to the fall of loco. October 2010, New Jersey's Rambopo College bans Four loco, blaming it for the more than 20 students that needed to be hospitalized from excessive drinking. Also in October, a dude is arrested after breaking into home and pooping all over the place, his last recollection is, of course, drinking a four loco. Also, also in October, production wraps in Atlanta for Fast Five. Halloween 2010, a young Will Fulton, aka me, drinks two four locos, that's Ocho Loco, eats an entire sleeve of Oreos, and throws up in his roommate's shoe. I am so sorry, dude. All this led to more bans. The University of Maryland, banned. Boston College, banned. Wegmans, banned. All this led to state bans. Michigan, Washington, Utah, Oklahoma, banned. November 16th, in a publicity stunt, New York Assemblyman Felix Ortiz actually drinks two four locos, that's Ocho Loco, to prove how dangerous they are, in less than 15 minutes, his blood pressure skyrocketed and he threw up, but he did not do so in his roommate's shoe. Good on you, Felix. November 17th, the day the loco truly died, Fusion announced they will be taking caffeine, guarana, and taurine out of their recipe nationwide. Later that night, heartbroken New Yorkers hold a candlelight vigil for their fallen malt beverage in Union Square. November 18th, the four loco black market emerges out of the tears. People begin stocking up on OG four loco, selling them on sites like Craigslist for upwards of $50 per can. November 20th, Fusion is stuck with $30 million worth of unsellable inventory. December, the new and neuter four loco was released, they took out the energy but kept the booze, the public was not entirely enthused. January 2011, an undercover sting revealed certain stores in Virginia were still selling the old formula. At the end of it all, Four Locos fueled college drinking careers for countless imbibers over the course of four jittery delirious years. Let's salute the can decked in electric camo, the horny hyper and happy juice, the super dangerous but admittedly fun blackout sauce. We will never forget you, Four Loco, even though we have trouble remembering you in the first place. Please like this video, share it, subscribe, let me know what I got wrong. If you have any ideas about what we should do the next history of on, please leave it in the comments. Thanks. See you next week.